This is KGW News at 5. And we begin with a sad follow-up tonight. A man turned himself into Vancouver police for killing his two-year-old and appeared over video in court today. Thank you for joining us. Court documents confirm this case is connected to domestic violence. Galen Etlin shares the update and how local organizations are seeing an increase in problems like this. You have a right to remain silent. A judge in Clark County read the rights of Gustavo Villalobos Carranza Monday. You are in on a warrant of fugitive from justice. He's the father who turned himself in for killing his two-year-old child Sunday. In the early morning hours of Halloween, Vancouver police got a call from the mother who said Villalobos Carranza had taken the child and was making threats. They put out an Amber Alert, but believe he killed the child in Portland near Gresham before turning himself over to Vancouver police near Northeast 57th and 4th Plain Boulevard. He spoke through an interpreter in court and was appointed an attorney. He's charged with murder and kidnapping in the first degree and unlawful use of a weapon. Another document confirms domestic violence. It hurts people when and where they are the most vulnerable. Multnomah County Chair Deborah Kofori and the county board spoke about the broader issue just last week. Domestic violence affects us all. Survivors are our family members, neighbors, co-workers and friends. The pandemic has been hugely challenging. Increased stresses and financial hardships from COVID-19 have made abuse worse. The Children's Justice Center in Vancouver is responding to 30 percent more cases than in 2019. And it affects all walks of life. Sahan McKelvey works with Self Enhancement Inc. in Portland, which offers support programs. And the pattern of an abuser is intentionally to isolate someone. And many are impacted. One in three women, one in five men, and one in 15 children. Where do we go from here? What sort of solutions are there? Do everything we can to give a voice to survivors. Constantly letting them know that I love you, I care about you, I'm here for you. You are not alone. It is your desire at this time to waive extradition and uh, be transported to the state of Oregon. Back in court, a judge confirms the path forward for this father charged with murder. Villalobos Carranza is being held without bail in Clark County until he's sent back to Oregon. His next court date is December 1st. Galen Etlin, KGW News. $38 million. That's how much the city of Portland and Multnomah County are investing in the homeless crisis. The millions of dollars in extra tax revenue will fund up to 400 new shelter beds at four new sites. More behavioral and public health services in high impact areas like Old Town Chinatown and up to two dozen additional positions focused on outreach. But that's not all. County and city leaders tell us about one fifth of the 38 million will go towards trash pickup and campsite cleanup. People will begin to see the results relatively quickly, but I also want to be clear, we're hiring new positions and we're establishing new programs or expanding existing ones. That obviously doesn't happen overnight. Mayor Ted Wheeler says the city and county are doing what they can to tackle the homeless crisis, but he's pleading with Congress to do its part and come up with a federally funded plan. Portland's professional women's soccer team has a new general manager tonight. She is former player Karina LeBlanc. LeBlanc has spent most of her life around soccer and most recently ran the women's football program for FIFA that encouraged women's soccer in North America, Central America and the Caribbean. She visited Portland and the Thorns players this past weekend. I walked in the locker room and they started cheering and I was like, you know, um, we tried to keep this um, internal and a secret. And, you know, so when I walked in, uh, my message was just more of hope. LeBlanc takes over for Gavin Wilkinson, who had the job of GM for both the Thorns and the men's team, the Timbers. He was placed on administrative leave in early October at the demand of the women players. Wilkinson now will be general manager only for the Timbers. LeBlanc's hiring comes after a summer of scandal for professional women's soccer. Three coaches were fired for their conduct, including Paul Riley, who used to coach the Thorns. An explosive article in September accused Riley of sexual coercion and emotional abuse while he coached in Portland. A lot of parents are paying close attention to what's happening with the COVID-19 vaccine approval process for 5 to 11 year olds. Christine Pitawanich has the latest on where it stands and what parents can expect. 
The vaccine approval process for kids 5 to 11 years old is no different than the process for adult vaccines or booster shots. This is a graphic from the Oregon Health Authority showing the process. At this point, the FDA has given the Pfizer vaccine a green light for 5 to 11 year olds. Next, a CDC committee will have to evaluate it, make a recommendation. The CDC's director signs off. Then it goes to a group made up of a handful of Western states. The last hurdle, the governor approves it. All that is expected to happen this week, so it's really no surprise that many parents have been watching the process closely. I will feel a lot, a, a big sense of relief when he gets a, a vaccine so that we can, you know, move on from this a little bit. Courtney Westling is talking about her six-year-old son, Evan, who is already scheduled to get his first dose next week, if all goes smoothly. Um, I still have a four-year-old, so he's not eligible yet. But I do feel like the vaccine wall around him will, you know, will keep him pretty healthy. Wessling also happens to work at Portland Public Schools. She's in charge of rolling out a pilot program aimed at vaccinating kids 5 to 11 at eight schools, of course, with parent consent. We have a pilot program we're working on with Kaiser Permanente and Medical Teams International to offer eight sites. Um, in Portland, specifically focused on schools that have very high barriers to accessing vaccines. She says the schools have many historically underserved students. We are centering racial equity and social justice in all of our work, including how we, um, how we al allow for vaccine opportunities in schools. Westling says the first clinic will be running as soon as next week. I think we'll have six clinics before Thanksgiving. She says it's possible a couple of the schools in the pilot program will have clinics into the beginning of January. After assessing the pilot vaccine clinics, the plan is to add more vaccination opportunities for kids 5 to 11 years old. Meantime, the Oregon Health Authority has also been preparing. A spokesperson says the state has ordered nearly 120,000 doses for kids that are expected to go to 300 sites. Christine Pitawanich, KGW News. Some travelers were left scrambling to get a rapid COVID test this weekend because of testing issues at PDX. That's because of a small fire that occurred late last week at the Carbon Health PDX testing site. Carbon Health is the company that is performing the test at the airport. There was no major damage to the testing machines, but the company decided to send the machines back to the manufacturer and get new machines just to make sure testing was accurate. Lindsay Whitehouse, a spokesperson with the company, said this about this weekend's issue. All individuals who had booked rapid tests over the last weekend were notified by Carbon Health about the situation via phone call and message through the Carbon Health application. White House said all individuals were able to rebook appointments for either a rapid test or they were sent to nearby pop up sites in downtown. The rapid tests at PDX were up and running again earlier this morning. After a year and a half of protections for renters in Washington, the state's eviction moratorium expired at midnight last night. Soon after COVID hit the U.S., Governor Jay Inslee used emergency power to stop most evictions. But that's over now, and thousands could potentially face eviction in Washington. However, new rules do require landlords to go through steps like offering tenants a payment plan before evicting them. It is election time in Washington state. The deadline to get your vote in is tomorrow, November 2nd. And in Clark County, there is a lot on the ballot. Tim Gordon reports. It is a busy ballot for November 2021, an off-year election to decide school boards and city councils in a number of places in Clark County. And there is a county-wide proposition that many people feel is important. Proposition 10 funds body-worn cameras for sheriff's deputies. Deputies have been involved in several high-profile deadly incidents. The sheriff, county prosecutor, and the county council all support body cams to increase transparency and accountability of all involved. The cost, a one-tenth of one percent sales tax, or 10 cents for every $100 spent, to pay for the cameras and administration costs. The tax would last 10 years to fund the program for 30. In Vancouver, campaign signs are all around. The highest level contest is for the city's mayor. We talked to both candidates to get their closing pitch to voters. Incumbent Ann McInerney Ogle was by far the top vote getter in the May primary and cites four decades of public service. For the last 41 years, I've been working in this community to keep it safe and welcoming and prosperous and vibrant. I can't do anything about the weather. I'm hands-on oriented. I'm results oriented. 
On this rainy day, challenger Earl Bowerman has one thing on his mind. He wants to take the mayor's job and improve what he sees as a public safety problem. I think that we need to take a close look at our budget and we need to prioritize what's important. So the number one priority is increase the number of police officers and put them in areas where there's high crime. McInerney Ogle points to progress as mayor, despite a pandemic, working to improve Vancouver from the waterfront and beyond. We're in the middle of some incredible work. We're doing lots of things with our community, our, our citizens, our residents, our businesses, and we want to continue moving forward with all of them. To the election itself, like the May primary, there is extra scrutiny coming from observers, most from the county's Republican Party. The auditor who oversees the election says they appreciate the interest in the process as the votes come in across the county and they carry out a fair election. In Vancouver, Tim Gordon, KGW News. And remember, to have your votes count, you need to get your ballot in a drop box or elections office by 8 p.m. tomorrow. If you still want to mail it, it must be postmarked by November 2nd at the latest.